Welcome to the Hearing Marketing Profits Podcast, the show that reveals how to take your hearing practice to the next level. Hear from professionals in the industry as they share their stories of success and inspire you. You'll also discover how to attract more customers with effective digital marketing strategies. Here is your host, Shane Gebhardt. Welcome, everybody, uh, to today's webinar. Um, excited to have you here. Uh, so this is, you know, marketing your practice for OTC hearing aids. Obviously, um, a very big topic uh, with everything that's going on right now. So um, we wanted to put together something for you guys uh, that that pertain to this. Um, let me keep letting people in here. Give me one second. I know we'll have people jumping in kind of as we go. Uh, and if you don't mind, just a few housekeeping things, if you can. Um, this is actually a the way we structure these is actually a meeting. So you can come off mute and ask questions. Um, we can do, we will answer questions at the end. Uh, but if you come in, just make sure you are muted. Uh, that way um, there's no background noise or anything like that that uh, causes people not to be able to hear um, if they're trying to listen in. So um, feel free as I'm going to pop questions in the chat as well. And I'll uh, I'll definitely answer them as we go, but we will have some some time at the end for any questions and, and uh, we can circle back on stuff. So um, so let's jump in and uh, and get things going here. All right, so um, what we're going to cover today. So as I mentioned, uh, basically what's on you know a lot of people's mind is uh, OTC with the uh, with the big announcement uh, and the things that are that are coming down the pipeline as far as that goes. Um, you know we've had a lot of questions with people asking us, you know what should we do? How do we how do we market this? Where are the opportunities? Um, so here's what we're going to cover today. So we're going to we're going to basically cover uh, marketing your practice for OTC. So this is this can be viewed as whether or not you have an OTC product or you don't have an OTC product. Um, these these principles and these strategies can be applied to both sides. So uh, I don't want anyone to think, oh, I don't have uh, OTC products, so I'm I'm not going to have you know anything to do with this or or have any uh any use for this. Um, I should say, or if you do have OTC, you can use these marketing you know these concepts work across the board. So um, basically we're going to look at how to optimize your website for the new opportunity. Uh, the SEO keywords and terms you should be targeting. Uh, this is pretty interesting. I got some stuff to show you that um, basically is going to really open your eyes to uh, to uh, all the search traffic and, and what people are searching for now. Um, the pay-per-click strategies and how to generate leads uh, in this new marketplace. So what keywords are, you know, the transactional keywords, you know, and uh, how you should be running ads on on Facebook and other platforms like that. Um, we're gonna look at email marketing strategies, uh, what to send to your database, um, basically, you know, how to communicate, you know, answer the questions that people have, uh, what video content to record that's gonna set you apart from your competition uh, so that you become, you know, that that trusted authority to, uh, to answer people's questions because there are a lot of people asking questions, you know, and, and what really this means. Um, social media content strategies to use there. And uh, even some direct mail strategies. So uh, we got lots to uh, to unpack. So, um, like I said, I'm excited. Let's let's dig in. Um, so, you know, you're here. You made time to be on with us live, and and we appreciate that. Uh, this is something we do, you know, monthly on different topics when it comes to to marketing your hearing practice. Uh, everything from digital marketing to traditional marketing. So, you know, you're here. You set this the time aside. We appreciate you being here. So, you know, uh, just focus up, you know, turn your cell phones off, turn off Facebook. I'm, I'm the same way. My phone goes off the whole time. Uh, I've got multiple tabs open, you know, pulling my attention away. So, you know, if you're a hearing practice owner or a, or manager or a marketing director or anything uh, along those lines, and you're serious about, you know, capitalizing on this, this new OTC announcement and everything that's coming with it, um, you know, the next 60 minutes could change, change your business and, and really open up a lot of possibilities and, and send new patients to your practice. So, um, so, Definitely focus in, you know, uh, feel free, like I said, to ask questions. Uh, we try to make these interactive. Um, so we uh, we want to give you guys the information, you know, and help you, you know, take things to the next level. So, so you might be thinking, uh, you know, who is this guy? Why should I listen to him? So uh, my name is Shane Gephardt. I'm the CEO and founder of Audiology Ignite. Uh, we're a hearing practice digital marketing agency. Um, so we focus on hearing practices. We work with hearing practices across the country. Uh, we, we have everything from single locations up to 50 locations. Um, you know, so we've, we've seen a lot. Uh, we, we work on all kinds of campaigns, you know, we, members of the IHS, ADA. Uh, I wrote a book, The Complete Guide to Internet Marketing. You can get that for free on our website 
or uh, if you like a physical version, you can get that off of Amazon. Um, but I have over a decade of digital marketing experience. And like I said, we work with audiologists and hearing practices across the US. Uh, so we do this you know, day in and day out. Um, this is what we do. So um, we, like I said, get a lot of questions when it comes to, to what the new strategies are, how we should be approaching them. So we thought, let's put a webinar together and, and really dive in. Okay. So what is the best way to market your hearing practice for the new OTC announcement, right? That's, that's the common question. That's what we've been getting. Uh, you know, with all the different channels, your website, SEO, pay-per-click, Facebook, you know, social media, direct mail, email marketing, you know, what, what should be the focus, right? Where, what, what should be the, the strategies behind the campaigns? What should be in the campaigns? You know, where, where should we be putting, putting our attention? So um, we got some more people jumping in here. Let me admit them. Um, so that is what we're going to dive into. So basically, first, let's start with, you know, what's the why? Why are we doing this? Um, Basically, like I said, we're we're getting this question a lot. We want you guys to have the information. We want you to know, you know, here's what you need to be focused on. Here's what we see working, uh, and we we just like to share it. You know, it's we want we want to help people grow their practice and take things to the next level. So that's why we're having this this webinar right here. Um, we're going to be continuously putting out content uh, like we do pertaining to this. So um, this what we're going to share today. This is what we see right now. So I want to kind of give it some, some context as well. Things are going to change. The world of marketing changes, especially the world of digital changes fast. You know, so things are going to change. But right now, this is where we see the opportunity where we think you should, you know, focus your attention on to, to get, you know, leads and people coming to you uh, with, with the new OTC uh, guidelines. So, um, like I said, there's so many options. Unclear where to focus efforts. You know, what, what, uh, channel do we focus on? I think the next slide, yeah, SEO, pay-per-click, your website, social media, you know, there's just, there's a lot, right? It's, you know, we've got to be so many places to, to be relevant these days. Uh, there's so many ways to get in front of people, stay in front of people. You know, I, people have heard me say this before, but the average person sees between three to 5,000 ads per day. Um, when you start to think about it, seems like that couldn't be possible, but, you know, between driving in your car, listening to the radio, seeing billboards, scrolling Facebook, um, watching TV, you know, you start to think about it. It's pretty po pretty possible that you could be seeing that many um, ads in in just a 24 hour period. So, how do we get in front of people? How do we stay relevant? How do we stay top of mind? And how do you become that resource for people when they have questions? Uh, the next thing, where should you focus your budget? Right. Um, again, with all these channels, do you pour heavy into pay per click? Do you pour heavy into your SEO and your your strategies there? Do you you know, run a lot of, uh, you know, TV, digital, or excuse me, um, billboards, radio, you know, so where do you focus your budget? So that's, that's a lot of questions we get as well. And then maybe, you know, you're trying things and you just don't have much to show for it. Um, so again, that's why we want to share this information because we know people have questions. We know this is an ever-changing landscape. We see new stuff day in and day out, weekly, week in and week out. Um, so we want to share that with you guys just so that um, you can help you know, take things to the next level. So um, if you don't have a clear plan, you know, you end up guessing and spending unnecessary funds that, that don't ultimately bring the results, right? So that's what we're here to uh, to avoid. So what's the opportunity? Well, it's pretty obvious, um, you know, with this, it's going to bring a whole new segment to the hearing industry um, and in terms of how, how things are going to go over the next few years. Uh, so the opportunity is pretty obvious, but, you know, we want to have a clear plan laid out. So that's what we're going to try to establish here today is, you know, getting you up to speed on where you should put your attention, where you should put your focus, where you should put your budget. So we want to have that. We want to generate new leads, right? This is going to be a, a great opportunity um, to get more leads into your practice because of, you know, the increased search volume, like we're going to look at, uh, just the increased awareness that people are going to have because of what, what was just recently announced. So, we want to take advantage of that. And then we want to have a great return on the marketing. You know, at the end of the day, that's that's the entire goal of, of marketing. Get in front of the right people, get them into your practice, help them, and 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 make a, a good good return doing it. So, so what does success look like? You know, we want to capitalize on OTC and, and get new patients into the practice. I mean, pretty plain and simple. Let's let's uh, you know help these people because you know they may have been putting off getting hearing aids uh, or doing anything about their hearing you know, until this announcement was made, maybe that's just kind of the, 
the, the thought that they had, you know, I'm going to wait until this, this kind of unfolds and see how it goes, but um, we can definitely help them one way or another. So we want to help you help them. All right. So I've used this, this kind of slide, you know, in, in a few of these next slides in, in other webinars, like I said, we do a monthly webinar on different topics, like your, your digital marketing plan and your SEO. And we kind of deep dive into, into each individual things, but one big thing, I'm big on goals. And so I always like to share this. I always like to include it in our, in our slides. Um, you know, we want to set clear goals. We want to be realistic about the expectations here of what we're trying to accomplish, what the actual goals are. And then we want to measure and adjust. That's really what it comes down to. We want to set the goals, measure them, and then uh, adjust as needed as we're going. So um, I love this comment by Brian Tracy. Uh, success is goals, all this is commentary. So Ultimately, you know, you need to you need to ask yourself, what are your goals for OTC, right? Do you want to be um, the leader in your market, you know, in your local area? Do you want people coming to you uh, for that, whether you have a, an OTC product or not? Um, so that's that's kind of what you need to be thinking about is is what is your actual goal? Um, and so with with no goals, you could be this sailboat right here, uh, just floating along with the current, hoping you end up where you're trying to go. Uh, seeing what sticks and and kind of going with it. But when you set goals and you have a clear plan, it's like wind behind your sails, right? It it helps you, you know, know exactly where you're going and uh, and how to get there. So um, yeah, we want to we want to map that out. We want to take the time. We want to sit down and we want to make sure that you know we we have a clear plan in place. Okay. All right. So now that we've got that, let's dive into the actual nuts and bolts of what we're going to talk about here today. So. Basically, with this being a new announcement, with this being a new um, sector, what you know, however you want to label it, people have a lot of questions, okay? And you're going to see how uh, apparent that is when I show you some of the, the research from the you know, SEO keywords and, and some of that stuff here in just a second. But where it starts is your content, okay? Your content is going to fuel everything. Uh, let me put I'm going to mute there real quick. Um, your content is going to fuel everything. So really... That's where you need to sit down and you need to think about, okay, what kind of content are we going to create? And I'm going to give you a lot of ideas here, but you're going to be able to take that content and it's going to fuel your SEO. It's going to fuel your pay-per-click. It's going to fuel your social media, your ads, your email marketing, your direct mail. That's going to be the fuel behind everything. Okay. So uh, like I said, we'll have a replay for this and I'll be able to send this out, um, but you can screenshot this, but this is some of the most common questions. Uh, that people are asking that you need to be creating content around, okay? So all of these have different search volumes, okay? People are actually going into Google. They're typing in, what are OTC hearing aids? How are OTC hearing aids any different from other hearing aids? You know, and it's just the list goes on down here, right? So this is just 15 high-level questions that you should be creating content for. And the type of content you should be creating are, you know, is video and written content. And I'll show you why here in a minute. But you want to be doing both because there's different ways to use both types of content and each is going to have its own, its own benefit. So um, like I said, each question has a certain number of search, you know, searches that are already happening on it and it's only going to continue to increase. So people are, you know, as they hear more about this, you know, the search volume is going to naturally increase. So you want to be the, the, the practice that is putting out this content, answering the questions, showing the expertise, so that when the time comes, you show up you know, in the search results or your ads are showing up, people are clicking on it and they're ultimately you know, ending up on one of your channels, hopefully on your website, um, so that we can then do some other stuff. You know, and uh, There's some layers to this, but um, so here's just to get you started. I mean, the list goes on. This is just a sample of it. But these are some of the, the searches or the questions that people are using. And we can see this with a couple of pieces of software we have. Um, and I'll, I'm happy to share those. One of them is called Answer the Public. Um, so answerthepublic.com um, alongside a keyword tool that you can plug in on Google Chrome uh, will actually tell you, do these have any search volume? And it'll actually show you what people are asking, what people are searching for between Google and Bing. Uh, it's a really cool tool. So highly recommend it if, uh, if you're in that research mode and trying to kind of get a, um, an understanding here of what, what people are searching. So, so here's the strategy, okay? And it's pretty straightforward, but I just kind of want to walk through it. So record these videos and answer, you know, questions people are asking. 
pretty straightforward concept, right? Doesn't have to be anything super high end. Um, you may have heard this before, you may not have, but a lot of data shows that, you know, people who just take their phone, I've got my phone right here and they, you know, they're holding it up and they're doing video in that format, as opposed to some highly polished, you know, highly produced uh, video, that type of video will do a lot better. You know, it's, it's just raw, it's real, people respond to it. Uh, there's something about our brain and, and the way we receive it, that it just feels more off the cuff, more natural. Um, we don't feel like it's, it's as, as much marketing, I guess, is the way to say it. Um, so record these videos. You could set it up, do it landscape mode. So turn your phone sideways, get a little tripod. You can buy them off Amazon, 10, 15, 20 bucks. Make sure your lighting is good. Make sure the audio is good. Record these. And then you can upload them as is, you know, if you're comfortable doing that. Or you could do a little bit of what's called post-editing, uh, you know, in something like a, like a iMovie or something like that. But um, just make them look solid and good to where you can upload them to YouTube, okay? Something that you're comfortable putting out. Now, obviously, if you have a marketing team in place, they'll know exactly what to do here, right? They'll, they'll be, able to, be able to run with this, but um, upload these, get them on your YouTube channel. If you don't have a YouTube channel, start one uh, because it is the second largest search engine in the world. Google owns it. Uh, people use it every day to try to figure things out. You know they're there typing in OTC hearing aids, trying to figure out um, you know, what the... Uh, what the lowdown is and and video is super easy to consume right you can probably think about yourself you know you go to youtube type something in you know and and there it is and and you're watching some how-to tutorial on whatever it is you know so um same concept applies here okay um if you want have a team member who likes to produce articles uh or if you like to write yourself uh produce that content centered around the same question so do a video version and a written version, okay? And then we're going to take this content and we're going to put it on the website. We're going to put it on as actual pages, which we'll talk about here in a second, and blog posts. So you want to be doing both. Um, not the exact same content, let me clarify. We're not going to take the exact same written content and do a page and a blog post, but we want to separate some into actual pages. So you should have a page, I think on the next slide we go into this, you should have a page on your website that is, you know, OTC hearing aids is the term you know, is the, the main thing of, uh, on the page. And then blog posts that answer any of these questions, right? These are perfect blog posts uh, type questions that someone can write about, okay? Let me click back forward. All right, so on the website, obviously then it's pretty pretty simple. You can think it, you can understand it that, you know, use it in social media posts, um, use it in social media ad campaigns. Uh, this is why we love video because uh, when you use a video, you can use static images, but if you're running Facebook and Instagram ads, for instance, um, when you use video, you can actually retarget people based on how much of the video they watch. So if you create a minute long video, you can then retarget the person who spent 30 seconds watching your video or even the whole minute uh, and gave you that kind of time because now you know that person uh, was invested in what you were saying. They listened to the whole thing. Even if it was only a minute long, 60 seconds in the world of Facebook is quite a long time. I mean, think about the last time you stopped and read something or listened to something for 60 seconds. I mean, you can scroll endlessly for hours. You, you, know, you can realize how fast stuff goes by. So if you can hold someone's attention for 60 seconds, you, you've got an engaged person, right? So that allows you to retarget them based on the fact that they watch that. So if you're answering you know, the question, what is the best OTC hearing aid? And this person's sitting there watching it, you know, now after they've watched it for 30 seconds, we can show them another ad that, you know, is maybe an offer or um, some more content or, you know, we can take it all, all kinds of different ways. But um, your landing pages, you know, we're going to put those videos on your landing pages. Uh, we're going to put them in your email newsletter, okay? We're going to put them in your direct mail. So when you, you know, you're sending out uh, direct mail pieces, whether you're doing giant bulk sends or one-off sends with your marketing automation, uh, both ways can apply where you put a QR code on it and uh, route them right back to the landing page. Okay. If we get them to the landing page and we've got it pixeled, we can now retarget them based on the fact that they went to the landing page. So you see how this all becomes kind of a big loop, right? We want to keep them, once we get them involved on something, some piece of content that we created, we keep them in your ecosphere of, okay, here's more information on OTC. Here's more questions being answered. Here's more information. That way they're informed. Then we can ultimately put something in front of them like an offer or form to book an appointment, come and get their hearing tested, you know, whatever it may be, uh, and ultimately get them in as a patient, right? Um, so number five here, pro tip, uh, if you don't have someone to write the articles, you can record the videos, 
and then use a transcribing software to create these. Okay, something like otter.ai. Um, and that, yes, that is the word otter, like the animal. Um, otter.ai is a free one. Um, so you can record all your videos, upload the video. It'll automatically transcribe them for you. You can go in and edit it super fast, super easy, saves a lot of time. Okay. And then number six, run a webinar, just like I'm doing here. Okay. It's very easy, very straightforward, but you can basically do the same thing that I did. Reach out to your network, reach out to your database, run Facebook ads, run Instagram ads, um, send out direct mail pieces, but basically just like you would, you know, if you've ever done an open house or a lunch and learn, do a webinar and basically explain to people, here's OTC hearing aids. Here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to look for. Here's the ins and the outs, right? Be that expert. That's really what this comes down to. Be the expert, be the one creating the content so that they know, okay, this hearing practice, this, this audiologist can help me, right? They're the ones who, who can ultimately help me. I have a lot of questions. I don't know where to turn. Let's, let's see what we can do here, okay? So that's really the strategy when it comes to your content. All right, so let's dive into the website and we're gonna kind of do this in, in sections. So it's your content, your website, your SEO, your pay-per-click, um, just like I highlighted in the beginning. So we're gonna kind of walk through these one by one. All right, so this is what I was referring to, pages you need on your website, okay? So you need a main OTC page, right? Because OTC, hearing aids are going to have a ton of search volume. The, the, the volume has skyrocketed, obviously, because of the announcement and what's, what's you know, come down the pipeline. So people are searching. So you need to have something on your website so that when they're searching, right, it's pretty, pretty logical. Um, so make an OTC hearing aid page on your website. Like I said, whether you have some, some product to, to fill that gap or, or not, there's still a reason to have it there because you want that traffic coming to you. Right, so use this to answer questions that people have. Make sure you have a form for lead generation. So after you've put all the content in front of them and they've they've digested it and and they've done their you know their research, uh, put a form in front of them. You know, let them book an appointment. Um, it's only only smart. Uh, and then use those images and video multimedia that we just talked about on that page to really make it complete and robust. You know, and and uh, and give them what they're looking for. Um, then you know you can start to get into the OTC alternative pages. All right, so here, you know, you can have website or excuse me, pages where, you know, you compare different products. Um, you know, you can, uh, you know, drive them to certain pages that answer a specific question. So when we looked at, you know, these questions right here, um, you know, you're gonna see stuff like, you know, the ones that have Bluetooth, the ones that don't, are these the best, who, you know, which ones are the best, that type of stuff. Those are all OTC alternative pages, okay? So you have your main OTC page, and then you could spider off of that. And that has some SEO value as well when you interlink from one page on your website to another. So we want to keep them there. We want to keep them in, in like I said, in your ecosphere on your website, um, you know, reading your content. Um, so again, also have a form on this page for lead generation. Uh, then we want to create the blog post using the keywords, okay? So we'll, we're about to get into the SEO stuff here in a second, but there's, there's already hundreds of keywords that have search volume, uh, all different forms of way people are typing in these searches um basically you want to have content that you know gets people to that are using those terms back to your your website so um try to put out content weekly if possible if not at least monthly um and you know create this content to answer the questions people are asking on google like i mentioned before uh answer the public is a good one um but if you also just go to google and you do a search um, so if you go type in OTC hearing aids, and I should have put a screenshot of, of this, so I apologize, but if you scroll, just scroll down the page and you'll see a section called feedback and you'll see questions. And usually it starts with about four of them. If you click on one and you expand it, it'll add a few more. So you can just start clicking and you'll see, it just keeps feeding you questions that people are asking. And then it'll show you the content that it's taking you to and where it's getting the answer to that question. So that's what you want to happen here. So if someone's typing in OTC hearing aids, Obviously, Google knows their location, you know, due to the, the tracking and the, and the way things work today, you can get your practice to show up when, when they're searching for that stuff, okay? So we just want to be there. We want to be answering those questions so that, like I said, it all relates back to you're the one creating content, you're the expert. All right, so let's jump into the SEO keywords. So here's what I was talking about with the trend data for just the term OTC hearing aids. You can see, obviously, it's had some search volume. Now it's it's skyrocketed. Okay, so this is where the opportunity lies, um, which is only natural, you know, with what's occurred. But um, it just 
I love this graph just because it shows you that it's, you know, basically 7x, 8x, give, it, give or take. Um, so it's, it's definitely something to, to be looking at. So again, don't feel like you have to like type all these out or you can screenshot it if you want, but we'll have the replay available um, for you. So this shows you kind of the keywords and the, and what I was talking about. So uh, this is a tool that I have that, you know, plugs into Google Chrome. So whenever I search something, it shows these, but um, best OTC hearing aids already got over 880 searches per month. You can see the cost per click. It's already up to $5 and 31 cents. So we'll get into the pay-per-click stuff here in a little bit, but uh, you know, the, the bidding is already up to $5 per click for that one. Uh, obviously people want to know when they will be available. You know, they want to, they're already asking about reviews. That's a common one, right? Um, you know, uh, OTC hearing aids 2022. Um, obviously you can see all the variations of what people are typing here, but um, just to give you an idea, it gets a little bit bigger here. Um, you know, so lots of options, lots of possibility um, when it comes to this. So the even more extensive list, I believe, yeah, I have right here. So um, this goes to show you where where a lot of the traffic is, what they're what what kind of terms they're searching. Um, just the term OTC hearing aids already gets, I want to say, as of this morning, about six thousand searches a month just for that term alone. So any kind of variation of that is going to have search volume. Uh, you can see how it's how it's gone up over the years, um, you know, month by month on this on this uh, chart here. Um, and then what you can do is you can use this to see, OK, um, which keywords actually have a lower cost per click, but still gets good, some good traffic. Um, so basically, you know, this can help you decide where you want to run your, your pay per click campaigns and what you want to focus on as well. So um, I think I got one more screen. Yeah, full of them here. So um, definitely, like I said, create that content, be thinking about it. OK. I need to create something for, you know, OTC hearing aids. I mean, people are typing in to see if CBS has them already, you know, that type of thing. Walgreens, you know, they're, they're wanting to know where they can get these things. Amazon, I mean, that's what they're looking for. They're, they're trying to figure out, okay, you know, who's the authority on this? What's the resource I should go to and where, where should I try to get these or should I even get them? You know, if, if I should just go and, you know, actually go to a hearing practice instead of buying, buying them online, you know, um, that's what they're trying to figure out. So, so creating that content, ranking for these terms is what's going to get you on their radar and then ultimately get, get, you, get them into your practice as a lead. Okay. Pay-per-click. So we're going to jump right into that as well. Um, I keep looking down, by the way. I just want to be conscious of time here. So we're about 30 minutes in. I like to keep these around an hour. So um, pay-per-click here. So um, there we go. Eight OTC hearing aids. So I said about 6,000. So I was a little, little high, but um, that was, I took that screenshot as of this morning. So 5,400 people per month are searching for that. Uh, it's got a cost per click of $3.82. And you can see uh, who's running ads. This is, these are the ads that showed up for me this morning. Um, basically, this is what we're talking about when we talk about pay-per-click. We're talking about Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. You know, all of that is you're, you're paying to put your, your ad in front of somebody. They're paying, you know, you're, you're paying to put your ad in front of somebody. And then they click on it. So pay-per-click. Um, so go hearing, nano hearing aids, consumers advocate and boss, a hearing boss, a hearing. Um, so are the ones that are showing up right now. Now that's not to say you can't come in and outbid them, right? If you're willing to spend $3 and 83 cents, uh, one penny more, you can, you can outbid them and, and put yourself right in front of these people. Um, now this is probably nationwide, uh, is, is really what this is pulling. I wouldn't imagine these people are just targeting my area. Um, they're probably trying to target the entire country. So, uh, something to be be aware of as well. But we're going to look at the transactional keywords. So now look at how these change. So you have keywords of, of what we call, you know, people are in research mode. They're just trying to do, you know, do some, some research and figure things out, get their questions answered. And then you have keywords that people use when they're in buying mode and they're trying to figure out, you know, where's the best price? You know, what's, uh, where's the ones for sale? Um, you know, all these different things that you see here, price of them, cheap ones, best cheap ones, different variations of those terms. So you can see the volume. And again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the, of the webinar, this is only going to increase as time goes on, right? These, these are not, most of these are not going to go down. They're going to go up, right? So now is the time to jump on this. Get, get your pages created, get your content created, let it start living on YouTube and living on your website, let Google index it so that 
as these searches and everything continue to grow, your content is there when when the time comes. So um, different variations here. Obviously, people Google things in a weird way. Some of these honestly don't make sense. And, and everybody uses Google a little bit different. Some people type in full questions. Some people type in hearing aids, St. Louis, or I need hearing aids in St. Louis. Everybody uses it a different way. But this is really kind of where the transactional keywords are. This is, so we got another screen full of them here. Um, so again, best, top rated, cheap, prices, you know, those types of, of terms are in the search that they're using. So you can see the volume, the clicks, everything over, over on the right side there. I believe, yeah, one more. So, um, so yeah, best OTC rechargeable hearing aids with noise, noise canceling. So there's a very, very specific one right there. Um, best OTC hearing aids with Bluetooth. So everybody, like I said, they want best, cheap, they want the reviews, they want those type of things when they do their search. So those are the, the pay-per-click transactional keywords to be focused on. And just not only pay-per-click SEO as well, but you can jump on this with the pay-per-click, you know, right away. Like you can get campaigns up, you know, up and running this afternoon. All right. So your landing pages, perfect segue here. Do's and don'ts. All right. So the do's have a landing page dedicated to each keyword group or topic. Okay. Don't just have one landing page for all those keywords we just looked at. That's that's not how we you want to do it. You want to have a, a couple variations depending on each keyword group or each keyword cluster topic. You know, however you want to label it, um, that you can send them to that pertains to the keyword that they used. Right? People get frustrated when they search something, they see an ad, they click on it, but the landing page doesn't really talk about what they thought they were clicking on. They're going right back where they just came from. Uh, we want to have only one call to action on the landing page. This is something we see time in, you know, all the time. And what I mean by this is we don't want to hit them with a bunch of different stuff to do and, and just ultimately confuse them. We want to give them something very easy, very straightforward. Uh, like I said on the, what is that, fifth bullet point, make it very easy to understand. Here's the landing page. Here's the information you were looking for. Here's your next step, right? One call to action. Fill out this form to get this. Fill out this form to do this. Um, you can put a phone number on there. Uh, if you do, I recommend using call tracking so you can measure that. Uh, but don't put, you know, this is down on the don'ts. Don't put up the full menu, right? Don't send them to your homepage on your website. Don't put up a full menu of the home, you know, with home, about us, your services, testimonials, frequently asked questions, all of that. You paid to get that person to that landing page. Your goal is to get the lead, right? Uh, that's what we're after. So don't give them a bunch of options and a bunch of different places they can go because we're going to lose them. Right, they're going to keep clicking around. You're going to see your your click through rate and your form fill rate uh, severely diminish when you give them too many options, too many places to go, too many ways to leave. Right. Shane, can I ask you a quick question on that? Sure. Yeah, Chris. So, um, like right now, I give them the option of texting, calling, or going right to a form to fill out the the, the request and appointment. So I'm trying to give them three different calls to action. Do you think that's too many? No, I think that's okay. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, we're big on the texting as well. We 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 like to use that and put that in front of people because we know, you know, people are, are I don't want to say across the board more inclined. That that's the wrong way to say it, but they're 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 just as inclined to text, you know, that they're interested or start a conversation that way as they are to fill out a form or make an actual call, right? So so no, I don't think that's a bad way to do it at all. Um, we do that quite a bit ourselves. Um, the part that gets me and, and I think people get confused is, you know, that is three ways to contact, but most likely I'm assuming your call to action is still the same, right? Your call to action is here's three ways to contact us to book an appointment or to get your free hearing test or to get this, you know, this promotion or this offer. We, where we see people kind of, kind of mess that up is they they have like different calls to action all over the page. So it'll be, you know, this form fill, form fill will take them to book an appointment, but this one down at the bottom of the page will be, you know, to get, get a different promotion or get, you know, uh, take an online hearing test or something like that. So there's a lot happening that people get confused about, but, but no, I, I think that's perfectly fine. Um, I think people are, are very inclined nowadays to, to pick up the phone and actually just text that they're interested. Uh, that's also why we see a big increase in uh, on Facebook ads. We run, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute, but we, we run different campaigns with different objectives. One of them is, you know, a messenger, right? It's to just start a conversation because people have grown to uh, understand what that is and, and have become more inclined to do that as well. So 
Um, so no, uh, great question. Perfect. Um, so yeah, along the don'ts, uh, use your website. Obviously, I, I mentioned that. Don't use your website as a destination. Uh, don't have the full menu at the top. We don't want to confuse them, and we just don't want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. So, um, so yeah, we want to keep it clean. Use your video. Use your content. You know that you created that we talked about earlier. Um, get that. Get that in front of them again, because that's that's the way the the online world works, right? People want people want that information. People want that that uh, those questions to their answers. That's what they're after. So. Um, you know, you can have landing pages that are just purely a headline and then a form. It, it, I see it all the time. I don't, I'm not going to say it doesn't convert because I, I've actually used very simple landing pages myself. That is literally just a form, maybe one sentence, and then, you know, um, a headline and it gets people to convert. But in this realm of what we're talking about, there's so many questions and that's where what we're seeing is that's where the search volume lies is people have questions people want, want answers um so giving that to them is really what we're recommending so so uh like i said we'll jump well, here's facebook and instagram ads so um here's a couple examples so this uh, i'm going to show you how you can go and see these if you if you're looking for inspiration anybody now facebook one awesome thing that they did is they opened up the ad library to be very transparent um so you can now go to any facebook page uh, scroll down to the, um, it's called the transparency section. It's a box on the left side. So uh, you'll you'll see like the, the business information and then maybe some like the photo section. And I believe it's under that. Um, but you click on that, you open it up and it says, you know, view the ads that this page is running. Uh, so you can actually go see, um, you know, what ads that page or that business is running. Um, or let me click over here real quick and then we'll come back to these ads. Um, you can go to the Facebook ad library and you can just search whatever it is you want to search and see what ads come up. So that's all I did for these three right here is I went to facebook.com slash ad slash library, uh, typed in OTC hearing aids. And here's what's, you know, there's, there's tons of them running already, but here's some of the ones that kind of stood out to me. Um, I think Bay area audiology right here, this is great. They're doing a great job right here um, because this is what people are wondering. What's the difference, right? This is, this is really well done. Um, so Wanted to show you guys some examples. Um, these, you know, not saying they're bad or anything. They're they're already jumping on it, right? They're taking advantage of of the 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 change in the landscape, and and they've jumped on it. So I I commend them for that. Um, so yeah, here's a few examples. To just kind of get the brain going, um, get the idea juices flowing, so you can see what what people are already running, and then uh, and kind of see you know where you want to position your practice and and your uh, business in this mix and how you want to approach it and what kind of ads you want to run. So, um, so we'll click over here. So again, use the Facebook ad library, uh, research what ads are being run for inspiration, and then jump on highly, highly recommend you jump on. If you're not already start running multiple ads with this different objectives. So if you don't know a whole lot about Facebook ads, or if you're confused by it, um, we've done, you know, webinars on this before we've got content on it on our website. Um, we did a 60 minute deep dive. You can, you can go check that out, but the way Facebook ads worked, you know, Facebook created without a doubt, you know, one of the best, if not the best marketing platforms in the world, um, with the fact that we just all give them their, our information, right? We, we basically tell Facebook, um, here's what, you know, here's what we like, here's what we don't like. Here's all the, all these data points, right? Well, this is, this is a heaven, you know, this is heaven for marketers, you know, especially like me. Um, so we do different ads with different objectives. Well, we got ad, we have ads that we want to do lead generation. So literally like a form on the website or what I just mentioned earlier when Chris asked, you know, uh, like a messenger ad is what it's called, where they can hit, you know, start the conversation and it messages the Facebook page. Um, then you have website traffic, you know, trying to send them to your website, your landing page. Uh, then you have video views. So you upload your video, you know, that video stuff, content that we talked about earlier. You want to upload those. Um, and run them as ads, right? Just point blank answering the questions that people are seeing that, you know, you can use a big headline on it um, to kind of catch people's attention, get them to stop. But um, we want people watching those those video views because that creates an audience that we can then retarget later, like we talked about earlier. Uh, so next bullet point, we want to retarget people, right? So anybody that goes to these landing pages, anybody that goes to our website, we need retargeting ads, ads that are following them around based on the fact that they went to these pages on our website. And then we just want reach and awareness ads, right? We want to be just reaching as many people as we can in our area uh, that we serve and, and 
make them aware, right? So these these ads can be uh, a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They can be a little bit more informational in, in their uh, approach because they don't need to have a specific call to action. Um, they can, and you, you, know, you can put a button on there, like click through to the website or the landing page, but it's not as direct of a call to action as a lead generation ad or a, a traffic ad or something like that. So, um, but yeah, just, just use the content that you created in these ads uh, to showcase people that you are the expert, you have the answers they're looking for. Here's here's what you know what you need, and and come to our website to get those answers. And then if you want to take it a step further, book an appointment, come in for a hearing test, et cetera. Kind of see how that goes. All right. So check my time here. Okay. Email marketing. So um, lots to unpack here. First off, if you're not doing email marketing, highly recommend you start. Um, if you're not collecting emails, I say this on every webinar, so I'm going to say it again here. If you're not collecting emails from your patients and, and your, your people coming into your practice and people that you're interacting with, start today. And you don't need any, you don't need any fancy software. You can just start a Google Doc and just start taking people's emails down. And the reason I say that is because your website and your email list are two assets that you own that people can't take from you or change without your consent. And the, the way I say that, for, I'm saying that for a reason because Facebook, Google, these big companies, we, we have to play by their rules, right? You know, I've, I've had conversations with people. They say, well, we live off of our Facebook page because we've got 10,000 people that like it. And I say, that's awesome. I, I, great job on growing it, but you don't know what Facebook is gonna do. And they, they changed the ball game up, you know, a few years back to where the reach, you know, now the reach on your Facebook page is just not what it was. All right. You used to, you know, put a post up if you have 5,000 followers, you could expect that 70 to 75% of your audience would see that, right? Now you're lucky if 10% sees it, okay? So the name of the game, they're pushing us towards ads. They're pushing us towards spending money. It is what it is. We, we have to play by their rules. So your email list and your website are those two assets, right? If, if Facebook collapsed, if Google collapsed, you would still have a way to communicate, you know, and SMS, we'll throw that in there, email slash SMS. So if you're collecting phone numbers, but you would still have a way to communicate with your database with those two things, right? You can put the information on your website and you can email people about it to get them to go to your website if everything else fell apart, okay? So if you're not doing it, start collecting emails today. Like put a process in place with your team and just say, hey, this is now mandatory. We need everybody's email, right? I know most people are doing it now. But I still come across people who say, yeah, we're, we don't really worry about it. Um, and it always blows my mind. But um, so email marketing. OK, so again, theme of the day, use the content uh, from the topics we discussed earlier. Send out a weekly slash monthly newsletter with the content to your list. So if you're already doing a monthly newsletter, this is pretty easy to, to just inject that content. Uh, you know, if it's already going out, if you've got a, a marketing company or an agency you're already working with and they're already doing this for you hand this to them and say, here, this is what we want now. We want to we want to make sure we're talking about this. We've created some content. Here you go. Um, but we want to push that traffic from the email, people who open the emails, we want to push that traffic back to our landing pages to convert them into leads, right? We don't want to just send them the content with without a call to action or with without any kind of objective here. We want to educate them. We want to answer their questions, but we want to get them to the landing pages, okay? Um, so one thing you can do if you don't have a newsletter going or anything like that, you can actually create an OTC, you could call it something like OTC email newsletter series, right? And you could put together a chain of emails, right? You could send out one every three days, uh, for instance, that'd be a good rhythm and answer those different questions that we looked at. So there's 15 emails like right there that I just gave you. So, you know, that's two months uh, if you do it every three days. Um, of emails that you can stay in people's inbox that, you know, or you could get them to sign up for the video series, right? And you could do all your videos and you could email out the link to each video to send them back to watch the next video and just keep answering their questions, right? Um, but we wanna create that email newsletter sign up page so that people can give us their email. Uh, and then we're gonna run ads to it. We're gonna run an ad campaign pushing people to that landing page to sign up for the OTC newsletter series. This is a very soft way to get on people's radar, right? It's a very soft ask. You're not asking people to book an appointment. They might be hesitant. They don't know, you know, what they should do, what they shouldn't do. Um, so if you want to do to do something and get in front of people and start getting your content in front of them, create that landing page, call it an OTC 
series, uh, and you could probably come up with a more creative name than that, um, but push people to that landing page, get them to sign up, and then start dripping the emails to them uh, to educate them, each with a, a call to action in it, to get them back to, to ultimately booking an appointment and coming in, right? Um, and then just, again, retarget that traffic with additional ads and offers. If they go to that landing page and you have it set up with the Facebook pixel, you can now set up an ad that only shows the people who went to that specific page uh, in the last 30, 60, 90 days, 180 days, whatever you want to do, and say, hey, every every person that went to that page, I want them to see this. I want them to get this offer. I want them to you know, be able to take advantage of this special, whatever it is. But that's how you start to generate, again, that, that pipeline where everything starts to work together. Okay. Um, and if and just a little graphic here at the bottom, but basically I know a lot of people know what retargeting is now, but you know, you have a visitor, they come to the site, visitor leaves, they start to see your ads around the internet. Um, I always use Amazon, you know, put, put anything from Amazon in your shopping cart and it's going to stay in front of you no matter where you go for the next, next feels like 30 days. But, uh, that usually helps people kind of understand what I mean by retargeting or remarketing. Some people call it that. Um, all right. Direct mail. Very similar to email marketing, but uh, use the content again. Send out a bulk direct mail piece, right? Maybe you already have a uh, a um, database that you're you're you know you're sending pieces to, kind of on a on a you know once a quarter type basis or something like that. Um, insert that QR code on the mail piece. Push traffic back to those landing pages that are pixeled that we can retarget, or run a webinar like we mentioned earlier. Uh, create that webinar landing page. Push people towards that. And then, um, you know, run Facebook, Instagram ads. Uh, you can run Google ads too. I, I, I don't want to leave those out. You can run Google ads for these same things. Um, but we find that Facebook ads, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, those are usually the best platforms uh, to, to run with um, on those. Google ads, very targeted searches. Um, people are, you know, kind of looking for things. You know, we just see better performance. It, we we send those that traffic to the website, like I was mentioning earlier, with specific keywords and the topics and everything. You know, the information talking about that. If we're doing a webinar, we rely more on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube to get to get signups for those. That's just kind of how the what the data tells us what works better. Um, and then again, retarget that traffic with additional ads and offers. Okay, so very very similar to to email. Um, a lot of this stuff, it's the same concept. You know, you just have to think about the platform you're using it on and how to make it work for that. But it can be applied pretty universally. Okay. Uh, bonus idea, run a buyback event for people who purchase OTC hearing aids, right? So think about it. You know, how would you set that up? It could be uh, an in-person event. Um, it could be uh, run as an online campaign. You know, just kind of, you know, how would you do that? Just something to think about. You know, I was having a discussion with one of our clients the other day. They were kicking that idea around, so we kind of talked through it. Obviously, you would have to work out the details on your own, so I don't want to go too in-depth on that just because everybody would, would kind of go about it a little different and what they would be able to do, but that would be a strong way to, to get leads in. You know, if somebody purchases, uh, you know, a set of hearing aids from, from a site and then uh, ultimately just gets frustrated, doesn't get the, the support they need, you know, something along those lines, run a buyback event, get them back to you. Um, Pretty straightforward concept there. Okay, um, so we're doing all this marketing, and I've shared this before, but you know the biggest marketing issues facing some practices are unconverted visitors, right? People that go to the landing pages, go to the website, and they don't convert. Uh, even maybe they don't convert on your on your Facebook ads if you're using lead forms on on Facebook, right? So 50 to 60 percent of inbound leave unconverted. 90% of web forms can fail to convert, right? It just depends on the call to action. It depends on what you're what you're trying to, to get them to do. Um, every every form is different. We have all the metrics to, to show this. I, we, see, we have some that are running that convert at 90% and then some that convert at 10%, just depending on the offer uh, and, and who it's in front of, et cetera. There's all kinds of different factors, right? But uh, leads that don't get followed up within 15 minutes go cold. Uh, the average patient must be followed up with uh, it can be up to five to seven times before booking, sometimes more. I've heard different numbers, seen different numbers in the metrics. Um, and today's consumer prefers to interact via text message versus phone call. Very similar to what Chris brought up earlier about giving them to, the option to, to text on, on these landing pages as well. So um, here's the solution, marketing automation. You've probably heard this before. It's become the new buzzword, if you want to call it that. 
Um, but, you know, following up with web forms within the first two minutes of submission via an actual phone call, email, text message, you got to jump on this. I mean, back to what we were talking about earlier with people and, and their attention span and keeping someone's attention for 60 seconds on Facebook and these different platforms is, is a feat, right? Well, the same applies. Even if they fill out a form, it doesn't mean that they didn't just jump to somebody else's website and do the same thing. Right. They didn't they didn't do a Google search and, and just start you know seeing which one they, they should go to based on who responds. Um, so you got to automate that process, automate the follow up. Every prospect gets touched, you know, at least five times. Uh, they're able to engage in two way text messaging. All the all the, you know, the ease of you know, we want to give them the ease of any way they want to communicate with us. We're there. Right. We'll take your phone call. We'll answer your text. We'll answer your email. Come in in person, whatever it is. Right. So it's simple math, but I always like to share this. You know, if you get 50 leads and your conversion rate's only 30%, just because you have no follow-up, nobody's calling on them, you know, you're calling them once, you get a, a, a voicemail, you leave it, and then that was it. You know, you, you, you just aren't converting at the rate you should be. Um, you get 15 booked appointments. Uh, let's say your average sale is $3,000. Well, you can see on the left here, $45,000, right? But let's up that conversion rate, same number of leads, but we just convert more, right? Pretty straightforward, but now we've booked 35 appointments instead of uh, 15. Do the same math. We've, you know, almost tripled our our bottom our bottom dollar there. Okay, so that's why this is important. You can do all of this marketing, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because you can do all this marketing, put all this effort into creating the content, everything we've been talking about today. But if you're generating the leads and they're not getting followed up with and they're not being worked properly, what was the point? right? You know, you're missing opportunities. So this makes every lead you generate more valuable. So something I want to share with you, Hearing Lead Pro, you can go try it out, 30-day free trial. I'm not here to pitch you on it. There's other solutions, but this is one that if you need to get something in place today, you can't, okay? So this is this is a software that we have um, that you, you feel free to check out. If you want to do a demo, you know, just sign up for that as well. But other, other platforms do this as well. So I don't want to just say, you know, ours is the only one. You may already have this in place. The point here is you just need to be using marketing automation, right? You need to be using uh, what's at your disposal to communicate with these people and get that lead conversion or that uh, appointment booked rate up, uh, you know, because you're generating these leads and you're, you're doing the work. Okay, action items. So hopefully you've been taking notes. Um, what are three of the OTC strategies you're going to implement, right? Uh, hopefully you have the bandwidth to, to, to implement them all. Uh, but maybe you've kind of looked at, you know, Adam, uh, what we've gone through here and said, you know, these three seem to be seem to be where I think my opportunity lies. These are the most important. Let's start with these. Um, I know it, it could feel like a lot. Maybe it feels overwhelming. Uh, maybe you just pick one and, and implement that. I will tell you, if you if you know anything about SEO and and marketing, um, SEO takes time. So I, I, I should have kind of went into this a little bit ago. But in terms of Quickest return and best bang for your buck, obviously ads. You can get ads up and running in a day, less than a day. And in a, in a couple hours, you can create everything, get it up and running, start getting leads flowing, right? SEO is a long-term game. But if, if 100 people are using a keyword and they're typing in, or let's say 5,400 people are using OTC hearing aids, right? A bigger percentage of the traffic goes down to the organic results as opposed to the ads. It's just the way it is, okay? so. Yeah, you get quicker leads off the ads, but in the long run, six months, eight months, you know, whatever it is, more of the traffic goes to the the organic results, and they they click there and they go and they you know work through that portion of the of the results page, as opposed to the ads. Um, and that's that's pretty much true across the board. I can't think of a term that I've ever seen where it's flipped or anything like that. It's pretty much people go to organic. It's just got the higher percentage of people where the traffic goes. Um, so my recommendation. You want to do ads, you want to do SEO, um, start the ads now, get the leads going, play the long game with SEO. Um, you can actually do like what I, what we call a teeter-totter effect where run ads on those keywords that you're working on for SEO. As your SEO climbs and you're starting to rank organically for them, turn the ads off. Don't keep paying for these leads that you're now going to get, you know, basically for free because you put in your effort on the SEO. All right. So takeaways, what'd you learn? Um, what'd you notice? What would you like to share? Um, again, uh, always open for a conversation here. If you have any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat. But uh, the other thing we wanna make sure here is that we're knowing and tracking our KPIs, okay? 
So you're getting people to convert, getting um, getting leads, getting you know uh, new people coming in, new patients, et cetera, is good. But we want to make sure we're tracking it. We want to make sure we know our KPIs, what we're going for. Are we reaching our goals? Are we falling short? What do we need to be doing, et cetera? So this is just, again, a, a screenshot from our software, but a lot of softwares will do this. This is not some proprietary revolutionary thing, but it's tracking, right? And just, and it gets overlooked. Um, you know, you want to be tracking. You want to know where people are at in your pipeline. You know, are they a new lead? Have they booked an appointment? Have they been followed up with? Um, you know, what's our conversion rate, okay? So if you don't have something to do this, uh, like I said, take a look at our platform um, or you could go to Google and just type in, you know, um, marketing aut automation platform. Uh, here's a simple example of a dashboard, you know, how many leads are you getting? What was your total ad spend, cost per lead, ROI, uh, break down your calls, pay-per-click calls, GMB calls, web forms. You want to know where people are coming from, right? This, this applies to all marketing across the board, not just the OTC stuff that we're talking about today, but anything you're doing, you should know your KPIs and you should be tracking them. All right. Uh, Chris got a question. I found Facebook is awesome for marketing, but I haven't tried Instagram. Would you recommend the same campaigns for Instagram? Absolutely. So what we do since Facebook owns Instagram, we just check those boxes while we're in there building the ads and the same ads are running on both platforms. Um, we find that 95% of the time that works just fine. Obviously, you've got to critique or, or edit the, the size of the image and you know the, the platform is slightly different. But because they own it, they've made it super incredibly easy to run them on both platforms simultaneously without, without too much trouble. So, so you find you're getting the same demographics, same types of numbers from Instagram that you are on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, because, well, yes, with the, the asterisk that it depends on the campaign um, and it depends on the targeting. So uh, I, I will say the older demographic is more on Facebook. Absolutely. But we're still seeing just as many leads come through Instagram, uh, if not more, depending on the campaign and depending on the targeting. So, um, yeah, yeah, highly recommend doing both. Um, I highly recommend being on YouTube, like I mentioned earlier, uh, with that video content. Um, and then I highly recommend, I, I'll even throw this, I mean, we're running TikTok ads now. People look at us, they start, they grin, but, you know, it's, it's, it generates leads. So, um, you know, the, the audience is there. Um, if you want, we, we're going to do a whole different webinar on that. But um, yeah, it's these these platforms that you don't think the audience is on. You know, we've always kind of heard or, you know, the data is reflected that, oh, only this demographic is on Facebook. You know, it's evolving as as we speak. Like I said, this this world changes fast. We're seeing seeing the numbers reflect that. So, yeah, we're, we're trying to advertise on all these other platforms, too, and test them out. So, absolutely. All right. Um, build your OTC plan. Uh, here's a, a cool little graphic. We have this on our website, but just just helps you kind of look through, you know, content creation, website, SEO, you know, your reviews that, that didn't really need to be touched on today, your social media, your email, your pay-per-click, everything we talked about today. Uh, the only thing we really didn't get into there is that top one repeat and referral. Um, you know, that's, that's, again, that's kind of a separate thing, but with this OTC stuff, definitely start with with what we covered today, um, that should be a, a starting point. And then the re repeat and referral can come after that. Um, if you want to build a plan, we've got a checklist. Uh, this is free. Um, it's not 100% geared towards the OTC stuff because this has been developed and we've had it on our website for, for a while, but it will help you check the boxes of things you need to be doing. And then you can factor the OTC stuff into it. So that's why I share it here. So um, just head over to our website. You'll see it there. The books there, you know, as well. So that really is a hundred and some odd pages that goes way more in depth uh, with the overall marketing as well. So feel free to grab that. Uh, all this is free. Again, we're not we're not asking for for any money or anything like that. We want to share share the information, share the the resources. So so let's recap what we've covered. You know, marketing and practice for OTC, how to optimize your website for the new opportunities. Uh, we looked at all the SEO keywords and the terms you should be targeting. Uh, again, the, the replay will be sent out, so you'll be able to look at those. I know the uh, the screen might have been you know a little bit difficult to see, depending on the kind of device you're on or anything like that. So this will be available, um, so you can pause it and actually look at all that. And then if you want, just reach out to me. I can send you the actual PDF of that as well. Um, we have those that we can send out as well. That's not a problem. Uh, the pay-per-click strategies, how to generate the, the new leads, email marketing strategies, video content to record. Uh, how to take it, you know, put it on social media, obviously be posting it on Facebook, Instagram, 
you know, Twitter, all these different platforms, LinkedIn, you know, be putting it everywhere when you create that content. And then the direct mail strategies as well. And again, we're just scraping the surface here. There's a good possibility we're going to do another webinar on this topic, you know, in the coming months and everything can change. It, it's going to evolve. It's going to, it's going to change, but this, this is where the opportunities that we see live right now uh, with, with the OTC. So this is what we're jumping on. This is what we're advising our clients to jump on. This is what we're executing on for them. Um, so this is, this is what we're sharing here today. So again, I appreciate you guys being here and setting aside the time. I know middle of the day, a lot of you have to see patients. So I appreciate you carving out the time. Um, if you want to talk, you know, feel free to head over to our site, uh, that URL down there, audiologyignite.com slash patients. That's actually a free training that I put together. It's about 30 minutes. Um, and then there's a calendar. You can jump on the calendar. You and I can have a conversation. We can see, you know, what it would look like to work together. If it would be a good fit, uh, we can help you put that plan together. Uh, and then again, have the conversation of, of what it would look like to execute on that for you. So um, with that being said, that's kind of the end of the content. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to either come off and mute, pop them in the chat. Um, again, I appreciate you guys being here. I know you're all busy, uh, especially if you're down in the Southeast with, with the impending weather, everybody's trying to get stuff done uh, before that. So um, if there are any questions, again, feel free to pop off mute or uh, put them in the, in the chat. No problem, Amy. Thank you for attending. Like I said, replay will be available. So we'll send that out. You guys can review this um, after the fact, once we get everything edited up after the recording is done. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for, for the, the great questions. So thanks. All right. Get a quick sip of coffee there. But yeah. Um, I've got a few minutes, but it looks like people are hopping off. So again, thank you guys. Appreciate you being here. We'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next webinar. Thanks. If you are looking for more information on how to attract more customers to your practice, go to audiologyignite.com and schedule your free practice acceleration session with marketing expert and founder Shane Gebhardt. You can also join our free hearing marketing mastermind Facebook group to learn from other practice owners. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave us a five-star review.